Hi there, my name is Gordon. I'm a reader, writer and uh, public library worker. Um, and today we're going to be looking at uh, some books that uh, I've been reading, uh, stuff that's new in stock, um, new poetry titles and more. Um, also, as a public library worker, while well, I'm talking in a personal capacity today, um, there's obviously uh, events that you can look at in your local library service and in Cardiff, and we have a couple coming up uh, with uh, in terms of poetry, uh, George Sandifer Smith and uh, Jeremy Dixon just this coming week, um, this Thursday at Cardiff Central Library. And uh, we'll actually be looking a little bit more at Jeremy Dixon's work a little bit later. Uh, so that's coming up soon and also the fantasy author David Towsey is coming to us on the, the 27th at the same venue. So there's lots of events to look forward to and they can be booked on Eventbrite if you do a little googling. Um, Personally, I've also um, been uh, a little bit busy over the last couple of months um, with some of my own work actually getting out into the world, which is a, a rarity. Um, and there's a, a poetry and music digital EP, um, which if you'd like, you can look up on Bandcamp, gordonanderson.bandcamp.com. That's called Hotel Familiar. So that's poems with musical accompaniment by the musician Spencer Sagalov. Uh, don't forget, of course, that the books we're talking about today um, can be uh, ordered from and requested from your local library service. Okay, so the first book we're going to be looking at today is going to be a few poetry titles. And the first is Back Teeth by Taylor Edmonds. Uh, which is published by Broken Sleep, and this is uh, Taylor's debut pamphlet. I was fortunate enough uh, to be at the launch event uh, for this uh, very recently at the Wells Millennium Centre. Uh, that was uh, a really uh, lovely, warm event. Also, um, poems by uh, um, Hanan Issa and uh, Nia Murray, who were performing live at the event, uh, as well as Taylor herself. Uh, and it, the event included, and I really enjoyed this, um, a, a live uh, poetry and dance performance in collaboration with the dancer uh, Jody Ann Nicholson. And that was a live performance of We Echo, which is also available as a, a film that can be watched on, on YouTube. Um, that was a, a, a really special moment where the, the air in the building, the air in the room seemed to change really. Kind of charged with the performance, beautifully timed, gorgeous movement. Uh, so yeah, that was really quite something. Um, in terms of uh, the book itself, um, as I said, this is a, a pamphlet, uh, just 30 or so pages. A um, lot of really, really beautiful, interesting poems. This is determinedly a, a feminist work. This is concentrating on female experience. This is talking about, about daughters, about grandmothers and great-grandmothers. Um, there's also a lot of physicality. In fact, the, the inclusion of teeth within the title seems to, to certainly not be a coincidence in any way. As well as uh, appearing in one poem, there's also references to, to backs, bumps, and also throats and blood. There's, there's that element of physicality that adds a really sort of visceral edge to it. Um, and it does bite down hard amongst uh, things that are, are more contemplative and, and beautiful. There's also uh, poems that relate to, to climate change um, and much more. So the, uh, this is, the, as I say, Taylor's very first um, pamphlet. Um, it is a very high quality thing indeed. Um, I'm very fond of it and I think there's a lot more to come from Taylor Edmonds in the future. The next book we're going to look at is An Exhausted Time by Emily Berry. Uh, now, Emily Berry's first collection, uh, Dear Boy, is, um, if pushed, probably my, my, my favourite collection of poetry. And it has things that are, are sharp and startling uh, and witty amongst things that are, are more uh, warm and romantic even. And I think that balance works beautifully for me and that's something I think that I'll always love. But uh, this is Emily's um, third collection. Now, uh, she's very well known, of course, in the poetry community. She's until recently been editor of Poetry Review for a number of years. And so you would expect there to be uh, a lot of invention and, and crisp execution in, in this book at this stage in her career. And it does not disappoint. Uh, these are, are prose poems full of, of dreamlike strangeness, uh, if you like, sort of worms emerging from the wet earth of the, of the subconscious, which she's very interested in. Um, there's love therapy, which comes up repeatedly, um, death, the impossibility of change, being ominously followed by a large coral-coloured bird, um, very uh, arresting images. 
and so on. Also, um, folded into the poems are lines from letters by Sigmund Freud, uh, quotes from Joan Didion and others. And this is done so skillfully uh, in italics within the poems that it takes a good look at the, the notes in the back of the book. Certainly did for me to, to fully appreciate. Um, there's a lot to take in in this book. Uh, it, it is like a lot of the best poetry I find personally that it makes, after immersing myself in it for some time, it makes my brain sort of fizz in a way that I simply cannot describe in words. And I'm going to say that has to be a good thing. I've also um, been enjoying uh, rereading uh, this collection, which is uh, The Last Polar Bear on Earth by Rian Elizabeth, not Rian Edwards, who she occasionally gets confused with. And uh, this is a lovely book from Outfrier Parthian Books in um, 2018. Uh, and it is, uh, I would have to describe this as, uh, as an unpretentious, a very funny, valiantly sad collection about, um, as it says very simply within the book, poems about being sick and being in love. Um, there are uh, poems here about being a single parent uh, and about having MS, uh, trips to the MRI machine, difficulties in going out and socialising, and there's a lot about being in and out of love, including being in a, a difficult, perhaps controlling relationship. So uh, there's a lot within this book, but it is, it is an, an easy and accessible read for people who might even think that poetry is not for them. You can give them this book and it might just change their mind. Possibly my favourite poem is called Afternoon Tea with a Unicorn. Um, and it's, it's a delight about taking her daughter out um, for afternoon tea, which her daughter doesn't like at all. But I would give this, as I say, to anybody and I hope to see more from Rhea and Elizabeth in the future. Now, we mentioned uh, Jeremy Dixon towards the top of the video, and uh, this is Jeremy's book, A Voice Coming From Then, uh, through uh, Arachne Press. And this is a book that has had uh, uh, a massive shot in the arm this year um, after winning the uh, Wales Book of the Year uh, English Language Poetry category. Um, and uh, Jeremy has uh, been on tour recently doing lots of gigs to support it, which is wonderful. Now, um, this is uh, a book that has a theme and a point. So this is a, a, a collection that looks at the, the poet's uh, teenage suicide attempt. Content warnings are kindly given uh, within the book. Um, and spreading a, a, out across the years then, um, covering uh, queer phobia, bullying, resilience and growth and acceptance. Um, and it includes within it um, even statistics, uh, very much related to the theme. One of which I'll read to you, which simply states, just one accepting adult in a LGBTQ plus person's life, or young person's life, I should say, can reduce the risk of suicide by 40%. So quite startling uh, facts contained within this, as well as, as photos, collage, um, some in visual invention in terms of how the, po the poems are, are displayed on the page. And there are also, uh, within the poems, you have Dark Discotheques, Bronsky Beat, Donna Summer, alternate realities, and regular appearances uh, at the poet's side by the Victorian demon spring -Heel Jack. Why not? So there's, there's, there's wit in there, there's invention, there's some darkness, but above all, there's a cultivation of, of love and kindness for, for oneself, um, both, both for, for the you now and for the younger you, or pain, fragility, all those things wrapped up in, in that young person. So it is, uh, there's a lot of kindness and, and acceptance within this book. So this, in short, is, is a, an on honest work and, and a work that can make a difference and you can't really ask much more from poetry than that. Okay, now our final book for today is this chunky companion, which is Brittle with Relics, A History of Wales, 1962-97, to by Richard King, published by Faber and Faber. Now, this is the kind of book that, frankly, I don't read very often, mainly because it's 500 pages long. So <laughs> some people may like big books and they cannot lie. I'm a short book guy, what can I say? However, this is a very educational book indeed, because uh, these days we live in, a, in Wales on a landscape of things like the, the independence movement, which is very much in the news. Um, and this takes uh, the period in the late 20th century that led us to the, the devolution vote, 
um, in 97. Um, I found it very, very ed educational. It's an oral history. So whilst, as we say, it's 500 pages long, this is broken up by the fact that you're constantly listening to different voices, different people who were there at the time who have important things to say. Um, I find it interesting because I only had a very basic knowledge of, of how much um, direct action and civil disobedience really took place in the, in the 60s and 70s um, on, in the cause of Welsh nationalism and the cause of um, fighting for, for the language, and the, including the formation of Cymdaeth um, and apologies for my poor pronunciation, the Welsh Language Society. Um, so I, I've learned a lot about the, the amount, the number of people I should say, that were prepared to have a night in the cells, two years in prison, more um, for what they believed in which I only knew a little bit about. So I have a lot more to go in this book. Um, uh, some familiar uh, figures are interviewed, people like Neil Kinnock, Nicky Wire and James Dean Bradfield from the Manic Street Preachers pop up, who of course grew up in the, in the valleys of the 80s, the miners' strike, etc. Uh, Abba Van is covered, of course, um, and then the, uh, the historic de devolution vote in, in the late 90s. Uh, so, as I say, I am only ooh, about a fifth of the way through this. There's a lot more to go. Uh, it's beautifully put together and uh, forms a really important part of Wales' cultural history. So, yeah, highly recommended. And uh, this is uh, the last book of the day, Brittle with Relics. So just to mention again, um, all of the books that we've, uh, we've looked at today um, are things that you can uh, get from your local library service or, or indeed you can request them from most library services. Uh, also, don't forget you can pop in to uh, speak to your local friendly library staff, have a chat with them, ask about what events are on in your area and, and how you can, you can stay advised. Pop onto a mailing list, follow them on social media uh, and stay advised. The vast majority of library events are, are, are free or very cheap to attend. Um, so keep an eye on what's going on at your local library service and hopefully we'll see you again soon.